Okay, we're back to recording. I'm getting ready to put a new radiator. Actually, it's a used radiator on here, but I'm not going to cover a bunch of things. For example, these hoses, I'm going to reuse them. You probably should not, but I will. Um, you've seen what I went through. It's up to you if you want to reuse your hoses. I'm not going to tell you which way to go on that one, but generally speaking, if you don't want to uh, go back through what I just went through, you probably should reuse, not reuse them and install new ones. Okay, um, this here is some weather stripping that come off. I don't know if you saw it. So, uh, I went to uh, Home Depot, picked up some weather stripping. I'm going to install that right now. There's also a bunch of, uh, like I said, hoses and temperature gauge and things that have to be taken off the old radiator and mounted on the new one. Most of that I'm not going to cover in this video because I already did it and I'm not sure I got the time right now. I want my bike to work. But you'll definitely need to do those things, you know. So. Here's some of this weather stripping. We probably need a strip about like, ooh, that long. You see that? Yeah. I went to the auto parts store first and they have some too. But it turns out it's just regular old weather stripping that you need to put here. If yours didn't come off when you pulled your radiator off, you don't need to do this. But mine did come off. so interesting <laughs> the sticky side isn't is actually the other side yeah um, yeah and I'm gonna cut another one about the same length about here and I didn't see anything down here I did pretty much clean this up as well with the rag you know, and uh, I wipe this with a with a greenie from the kitchen, some kind of. You don't really want to use sandpaper, but but a green scrubby pad will work really good to get that clean. This top piece I'm not going to replace, and that takes care of the weather stripping. This here's what I bought: air sealing tape for medium gaps, quarter inch, basically. Maybe it's a half inch wide, I don't know. Uh, I found this at Home Depot. I'll let you get another quick look. You'll have to pause it if you want to get another look. Uh, 022, 02279 is the product number. It's about four or five bucks. Yeah, about four something with tax. I paid with a five and got a dollar and some change back. You know, I, I want my stuff done right, and that's why I do it that way. Now, I will go through one thing here real quick. There's a couple of pieces of frame on the old radiator. I did mark this one as leak, so I wouldn't ac accidentally reinstall the leaking one. And, uh... These will need to come off and re be reinstalled on the other one. Oh shoot. i put this on pause. Okay. Uh, I'll put some earplugs in. This stuff needs to get a little bit noisy. Basically, uh, this thing is visible. Uh, I do wear earplugs anytime I'm working with power tools. And basically, I'll put these here. This comes off. I'm going to bring me my other radiator. <laughs> I did somewhat test it for leaks. I'm not 100% positive that it does not leak, but to a point you take a chance. You screw 
basically slide out like so and slide in here just like that oh, son of a gun That's this little piece here is fortunately it's already on there oh, thank you and uh, to my understanding they go like that may not have done that just right with all of them. Ah, this is such a pain. I think I got it. Yeah. And, uh, oops. So, yeah, 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 the, the flat end goes up against the side of the radiator, the, the, the outer end. I'm not real sure why they even put this thing on here, like it's going to really stop the rocks or anything. I mean, it'll stop major stuff, but... Basically, this radiator should be ready to go on to the bike. the fun part. I'm going to put this over here so I don't get them confused anymore. When I say the fun part, <laughs> I mean I don't remember where half of these guys go. I really don't. I somewhat do. I'm going to hope that this is the one that goes here. Yep. We know it's a 10 millimeter, so this goes on like that. I'm gonna put the hose on. Oh, <laughs> I'll tell you. And uh, I guess you might not have seen that, but basically. this one. It comes with a washer. Oh, there wasn't supposed to be like a rubber piece attached to it. Uh, and it breathes all over the freaking floor. This is just lovely.
side and start mounting up the top of this thing. This here's the old bolt. I'm going to probably just use the one that's on here now. No probably about it. I gotta remount this piece. It goes right here. Uh, I don't remember. I think it goes like so. Before I do that, I'm gonna get my pliers. Always try and mount these things so that you have some kind of an access to them. everything up all at the same time it feels like <laughs> and uh, that's the top radiator hose here that's gonna go in there I hope I can remember how to put that thing on I'm gonna face it like this so I've got a little space to get up in there with the screwdriver whether that's right or not I couldn't tell you and uh, uh, there's that Only connect one way. Yeah. 
one here and one here. That's your uh, temperature sending unit. I'm going to try and grab this one like so, so I can plug this one. There we go. It just, it, it'll, you'll feel it click. And uh, that's, that's good. You know, double checking all the connections. something else I do want to cover real quick while I'm playing with this. Some mechanics will tell you to never reuse hose clamps. Basically I will reuse them so long that they are they appear to be in good shape. I've reused many hose clamps but again you have to make that choice. Uh, my house plant and uh something so it doesn't slide away from me. Bring it out a little bit and tighten it up some more. Usually these guys I get them on pretty snug. Yeah that's good enough. Did I uh, the, the bottom the bottom one needs to be tightened up. Whew, uh, it's coming along, you know. Uh, there's the bottom one. I might have put that on backwards, but... before I put the rest of this whole thing together. Uh, 
I'm going to do two more things. One is I'm going to get this bolt. Put that together. That's going to go through here. As you remember, that's that 14 millimeter thing. Thank you. No, really. <laughs> oh my goodness. That could have got ugly. Now this is very interesting. Because this doesn't appear to have the same uh, Loctite. Uh, they're about the same. 14 millimeter. Uh, to get that, uh, that deep socket. And uh, make sure they're on tighten. Fortunately, I think if everything is done right from here, this won't take much longer. Oh, that's the wrong size. What the heck? on there. I mean, golly, yeah, it ain't going nowhere. Now, I'm going to get that rag again. Clean up a little bit up in here. And, uh, basically, one other thing I'm going to do now is uh, add new antifreeze. Yeah, I don't reuse antifreeze. No. No way. And uh, probably going to have to do it that way. Kind of get a funnel going here. Oh, that's, well, yeah, uh, more joy. it's full. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta play with this. It won't fill all at once. A little bit will go in and
get the air bubbles out of the system. I hope it doesn't actually run. I'm just going to basically turn the engine over a few times. tag is backwards but I don't care and uh, I'm not sure if there's enough video left here in terms of battery and uh, what have you again no I mean really <laughs> you know get up in here and clean this this would be a good time to replace the air filters as well but mine were just done not too long ago the air filters would be up in here is one and the other one is uh, uh, I think down up in there one per carburetor. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Well, I think that's good enough. You know, gives you a good chance to get up in there and kind of clean it up a little bit. The way you know whether you got the right one is this little piece with the hole. And, uh, it's basically like that. Gosh darn it. Son of a gun. The little piece fell off. Yeah, that, that stinks. That stinks. It's not in here either. No. Oh boy. That, that little piece right there is what just, well, no, it might still be on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> not too hard. Kind of leave a little play in it. Now I've got to take this and clamp these guys here back down into that. And uh, then there's those four bolts that go on top. Oh boy. You know the one thing is those go in the front. Remember these? Yeah they will go right here. This is not right. There we go. Oh yeah. That'll be a first if a bike can be moved back together faster than it come apart. I'll put the cap on the antifreeze before I lose it. The cap on it or step on it, crack it. Now, basically when I put these back together, sometimes I just go with what I have. 
now. Because a lot of the screws look the same, I get confused. Uh, so. the third one and that's gonna go on the other side. Uh, I hope I didn't get these backwards. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I did have a little mix up there. I think this is gonna go like that. And uh, I'll have to re-loosen this one the other side holding on to that as well. Basically pull it back out a little ways, not completely, and hopefully the other side, side will slide right in. Same trick here, this little piece uh, out and like so. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. This goes up here. This well, that stinks. The camera aimer cut me off. And basically, I put this back on here. On this side, I uh, basically haven't quite got that uh, together yet, so I'm going to work on that next. Oh my goodness. Oh, there's one little problem. I lost that bolt. this video when I go find that bolt. Okay, I found that it was in my pocket of course. So here comes this piece. I'm basically I'm gonna try to hopefully that doesn't cross 
for it because it's awful. Funny angle. Well, well it ain't cross-lighting, but it's also not operating. Darn. It's like I'm going to try it with the small screwdriver. The little Phillips head. The stubby. This guy hopefully will do the trick. Unbelievable. But I think it's on there. No, that's that doesn't look right. I'ma try it through here. That's what it was. <laughs> okay, so to get that one there, you got to go this way. That's on there. I'll tighten that up. And last but certainly not least, this one right in here under the headlight. And this one actually holds both pieces kind of together. I'm going to put this over here. What you gotta do is push the pieces from both sides. Ah, son of a gun. Because one of them's not really lining up. Sir, one more piece of the puzzle. Now I gotta find those top four bolts uh, that held the uh, and they're all gonna be the same. Okay, these here are the radiator bolts. Top and bottom. That's what those are. I don't know what the heck that thing. Oh yeah, that goes on here. Okay, so these are uh, highway bar bolts. I don't know what that was either. These are seat bolts. To my understanding, these four are going to be those guys. That's what I'm going to try and do next. Yeah, in case you're wondering why I used the used radiator, they wanted hundreds of dollars for a new one. And I don't mean a few hundred, I mean hundreds of dollars. Oh, there's a little, there's a little piece that goes on here. Uh, a little cross thingamajigger. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's probably where that bolt goes. And, uh... Hopefully, these are correct. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, uh... I just had a random memory flash. These are the correct bolts for this application here. Nuts, bolts, bolts. 
So the Phillips head ones go in here. Yeah, air tool would have been nice for that, I tell you. But uh, I don't have any screwdriver application air tools right now. Technically, at this stage, I should probably run the bike and make sure it's not leaking. If I do that, it's going to be hot. Do I want to do that? Or do I want to take a chance? I'm going to take a chance because if it leaks, it leaks. Kind of a problem, but... Stick that on there next. Oh, oh, I messed up. This piece goes on before the screws go. In. I'll tell you, I'm gonna grab me some gasoline. Set this camera up somewhere where it'll film me without. bolts. I still got a drawer half full of them. should have took some uh, steel wool to it.
clean this piece up a little bit. Get some of the dirt out of there. You know. I mean, it may or may not make it run better, but I do know dirt another part of the reason. I don't, I don't necessarily care whether the next mechanic that has to work on this thing is impressed or not. I mean, probably not. But some are. I've gotten compliments. And, uh, you know, I may not be a certified mechanic, but, uh, I can certainly appreciate having a clean surface to work on. I really can. People might think, well, you know, there, of course you're going to get dirty working on an engine. No, that's not necessarily true. Only if the engine is dirty will you get dirty. <laughs> so, um, you know, I usually keep a rag handy and wipe it off as good as I can where I work at. Or whatever I'm working on. And uh, the other thing is, dirt can, over time, get in the way of things. It can fall into some place that it's not supposed to fall into. Um, you know, and uh, it can actually wreak havoc with your machine. I'm not saying it will. And a lot of times, I mean, we've sh sure seen some seriously dirty machines run really good. But as a general rule, that's not usually the case. So, that takes care of that, you know. And uh, there is one little problem. Yeah. Maybe I just gotta tighten that down. That's a stinker. This whole thing here is, is not lining up right there. trick here is basically going to be to lift this up and then stick a screwdriver there. Not sure if you can see that. Right there. And hopefully that will keep this where I can put that in there. think that that's the screw that goes there. Awful big screw. Where's 
that thing go? Oh, that goes down at the bottom of the fuel tank. So yeah, that's not the screw. Oh. Well, I know something goes in there because there's a thread. But That's just the way it is. I mean, I don't really understand what the heck went in there. But I do remember something being in there. I do, I do. I remember pulling that thing out of there. I hate to have to review a whole video just to find that one little piece. Yeah, this, this is kind of the things that they don't normally show you on the video. These little problem situations, you know.
isn't that interesting? Well, that's on there. <laughs> I don't know if that's exactly the right one, but it is now. All right. You know. Oh, you know, it's funny too. <laughs> I ran the bike a little bit ago. There's no fuel tank on it. It ran just off the little bit of gasoline inside the carburetor. So, yeah, even if I wanted to run this bike until it's warm to check it against leaks, uh, it wouldn't go far without that gas tank on here. So the gas tank has to go back on before, I mean, yeah, yeah, these are actually a way you can do it without hooking that thing back up, but... I'm just going to put it back together and hope it runs. Son of a gun, huh? Yeah, that's, that's bit me in the butt before, I tell you. Okay. Quick little throttle and brake and everything check. This goes right down. There. And to get that to line up, I hope you can see it. You know, I kind of lift on the gas tank and play with it a little bit. It's best to lift it up just enough to where you can actually see that. There we go. doesn't go in terribly deep, so that's that. Now comes the seat. In your case, you might not have as much seat as I do, so to speak, because i got these fuel bottles here. So, the seat. the Velcro strap for the uh, gel seat, that goes like so. Ah, oh, this goes here. Thank you very much.
flathead screwdriver to poke these back in if that comes loose on you. On there. Whew. I'll tell you, that is sick. And uh, this this thing here is once installed, it's not bad, but it's another joyous little trick because that's gonna go there. This one here. stuff. 10 millimeter. Ah, oh, that's just, you know, there we go. I probably could put this on with the air tool. one side at a time so I can actually see what I'm doing. <clears throat> contains 1.5 liters of gasoline. You do need a Phillips head screwdriver to loosen these up if you're on the side of the road.
that's that, and then there's this. And oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Ah, there it is. thing lined up. Hold it like that so it doesn't slip, right? <sighs> oh, this is such a pain. Why is it gotta be such a freaking pain? tell when it's in there. It just goes so much easier. And just snug it on there. And there's this piece. Clean this up a little bit. So, and uh, yeah, you gotta kind of get these guys here to line up with this and this. Now, so you kind of stick your hand back here a little bit, like help to line that sucker up. Yeah, like that, you know. And uh, I can't say for sure if this one goes back there. Technically, it's this one goes in back. But this seems like an awful long one to go in here, and I know it'll go back there. <laughs> I'm going to try it both ways. What the heck? better may have to you know pop it a little bit yeah yeah that's it that's on there now I mean I can just feel it going in there huh? same stuff went in pretty good I wanted to tell you too this is on six these here are a type of a oh gosh some kind of a clamp and they're connected to these other guys right there. It's, it's actually a combination of parts that make up the fuel bottle mount. You know, those are 
not part of the bike. But I do like it. It's a good conversation starter. And they really do contain fuel. Um, I have used them. Twice. So laugh if you want, but they do contain fuel. They do get some use out of them. Normally I only use one at a time because of how much work is involved just to get it off the bike. It's just a few minutes, but you know. A liter and a half is basically one and a half, like 48 ounces. It gets you another 10, 15 miles down the road. Okay. Oh no. I messed up. I gotta pull this back off. Gosh. And I'd have to pull it completely off. I can just slide it out. takes care of the fuel tank. I'll turn the fuel back on. I would start it, but you know what? I want to finish this job. Because, uh, So, oh, I haven't hooked this thing back up yet either. Let's see. Okay, so that goes like so. It basically goes up in here. Rag.
mount that radiator cover and things. I'm just about done with it, and then hopefully I can find that bolt. Just up here. These are the uh, top of radiator, bottom of radiator. the inside of this thing. Yeah, I'm going to. a little bit. I'm not going to get it too dirty all too clean. Hold on. The rag's almost dirtier than when I'm cleaning. It ain't, but it's cleaner than it was. This here is just a regular piece of like, I think quarter inch grate that I bought and cut to size. Because it cost me like a few to several dollars for this. But they want like, they have one that's for this bike, $145. But just for this little protection piece. You know, I just used, and it is rough around the edges. You can cut yourself if you're not careful, you know. But once this cover goes on, <laughs> and then this basically goes like so. And here comes the hard part lining it up. This is a used radiator that come off a different bike. I see I'm in the way here. So, uh, the trick here is to see if these will actually screw in. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, all right, I got him to go in there. Uh, it's it's a bit rough. So. Probably am going to try the air tool on these guys. Could seem disastrous. But it could also save me quite a bit of time. in here like so. Basically, um, you know, the only thing I got left to do is the highway bar. I may finish that up in just a minute, but I'm going to interrupt this. I got to go clean my hands. Okay, we're here. Now, again, the, the repair is basically done. Um, 
but I've got highway bars to hook up to, you know, and uh, that's what I'm going to do next. Uh, I'm going to give a quick rundown real quick. This is not a repair I would attempt in one sitting. I think taking frequent breaks throughout is not a terribly bad idea. Short breaks, you know, not hour long, but five, ten minutes here and there, maybe once an hour or twice. Keep you from getting too frustrated. It's uh, it's not impossible as a re as repairs go, but uh. It's got a couple of sharp twists and turns, uh, you know, but, uh, yeah. And that, that takes care of this little piece now. I'll hook up this other one on this side, and hopefully I can just slide that sucker on there like so, and boom, 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 you know. Oh gosh, it's, it's starting to look good, I'll tell you. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to tell you, man, I, I bought this bike. I, I'm on a budget. I don't have a lot of money. You know, I don't. This bike I bought for three thousand dollars it was a nice bike when I first got it it had like six thousand miles on it you know it was about eight or ten years old at the time it did have a little age to it but it was nice I put about oh gosh a good almost yeah, about twelve fourteen thousand miles on it and uh Try and line this all up. tools do come in handy, I tell you what, you know, and something to, to, to have to fool with at the very end of the repair, so, you know, basically it's just not quite lining up right up in there. Oh, I kind of see what the problem might have been. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>
screw, man. One screw away from finishing. Sorry about that. to the radiator itself you know and at the end I'm gonna give it a little bit of manual uh, tightening yeah that's that's actually on there pretty decent yeah that's good enough yeah I'm not even gonna tighten that anymore I already heard it click once that's <laughs> hopefully that won't come back to that any worse uh, that, that little click was a sign of it stripping. You know. So that about concludes it. I gotta tighten up a couple more things here. Now start putting up my tools. So uh, I don't lose track of what's going on. Yeah, that's, that's always lovely when that happens. And, uh... Okay. Hard to believe that's a 14. That's it. And, uh, I'm going to put up my tools. And that's pretty much... Well, I've got to do one more thing. thing these highway bars at least on this bike they're not really <laughs> I, I'm not real sure about any other bike you know they call them crash bars or whatever crash guard yeah I'll tell you what if you crash you're screwed guard or not <laughs> I see some people act like these crash guards will save Oh, it'll save the engine, they tell me. Well, you know, really? <laughs> it's going to dent the crap out of your frame. So, hang on a second. Hey! complete the repair at this time. I'm cleaning up the tools now. 
tool set. There's a little bit more to it. That's pretty much what you saw me using today. Here's the screwdriver section. And here's the pliers and monkey wrenches section. And a couple other things, you know. So, it's not an impossible job. It takes, took me a good 3-4 hours. And, uh, you know, I did say take breaks. Take breaks and uh, you may have to run off to the parts store in between to get some things. You know, probably one of the biggest uh, problems, you've got to be real careful with these uh, radiator bolts here. They're, uh, you don't want to tighten them on real good. You might even use a torque wrench and I don't know what the uh, specifications on that are. But basically, see if she's in neutral. Boulevard, you know, I've uh, kind of done a little bit of work 